Hey, thanks for joining. My name is Sanjeev, and I'll be walking you through various lessons in accounting. I'm hoping to present these lessons to you in a very simple, easy-to-understand format, and we'll go through various examples that will help you understand the basic concepts of accounting. In today's session, we'll go through what financial statements are, and what the purpose of accounting is, and what you should expect as the final outcome from an accounting process or system. Let's work through an example. Let's take Ron over here. Ron decided that he would get started by opening his own business and he would provide web design services to various clients. He decided to call his business Ron's Design Services. So here we have Ron and his company is called Ron Design. At the start, Ron put in $1,000 of his own money to help get the business started. He also put in his laptop and he asked his mom if she could loan him $500 to help him get started with the various expenses in the business. Ron knew that he needed a way to keep track of all of his business activities and to get reports that would help him better understand the health of his company. Let's get started by looking at the various financial statements. The first statement we'll be looking at is the balance sheet. So what's a balance sheet? A balance sheet basically gives a snapshot or picture of the financial position of a company as at a point in time. What does that mean? Well, basically it tells you what the assets, liabilities, and equity are as at a point in time. Assets are basically things that the company owns. Liabilities are the various things that the company owes. So, for example, a debt or a loan. And then the equity is the remaining value that's left over in a business. That, that it's also known as owner's equity or shareholder's equity. So let's take a look at what Ron's balance sheet would look like at the start of the period. So this is when Ron first got started with the business. So let's assume that that is as at January 1st, 2013. So we mentioned that Ron put in a total of $1,000 cash when he set up the business and his mother also lent him $500 which she would expect the company to pay her back. So in terms of assets, um, there's cash that's sitting in the bank, total of 1000 plus the 500 so $1,500. Um, also, he put in his laptop, which we'll put under equipment. And let's assume that his laptop is worth $500. So there's a total assets of $2,000 in the, in the business. Now in terms of liabilities or what the company owes, we have the debt that's owing to Ron's mother. So debt to mom is worth $500. And finally there's the equity which is the leftover value uh, in the business and that equity would be $1,500 and that equity would basically be made up of the $1,000 that Ron put into the business and his $500 equipment. You'll notice now that the total of the assets, $2,000, equals to the total of the liabilities and the equity of $2,000. That's why this is called a balance sheet. Total assets must always equal to the total liabilities and the total equity. Now, during the month of January, there were many activities that happened in Ron's business. For example, he made a sale to a client for $200 to help him build his website. Also, Ron incurred a lot of expenses. Ron needed a statement that would show him all the sales and the expenses during the period. This is known as an income statement and it basically shows all the activity that incurred throughout a period. So here we have an income statement. So while a balance sheet shows the, a snapshot or a picture at a point in time, the income statement shows what happened during the period in terms of the activities of the business. As you mentioned, there were sales during the period of $200 and he also incurred various expenses. Let's assume his expenses amounted to $100. Therefore, Ron made a total profit in the business of $100 during the month of January. Ron then wanted to know what was the financial position or the health of his company at the end of the period. So we'll need to take a look at what the balance sheet looks like at the end of the period. So as at the end of the period, this is what his balance sheet would look like. So this is as at, let's assume at the end of the month, January 31st, 2013. Now we mentioned that during the month there were sales of $200 but these are not cash sales. The client still owed Ron's design services uh, the $200. However he did incur expenses and let's assume that he paid for those expenses in advance. Therefore at the end of the month the cash that was left in the bank was the $1,500 to start with less the $100 that he spent during the period. So there was $1,400 left in the bank. He also had an amount that was receivable from the client for the sale of $200. So 
So that's what we call an accounts receivable. And finally, he still had his equipment, his laptop, which was worth $500. At a later stage, we'll talk about uh, what we call depreciation. But for now, let's just assume that there was the value of the laptop is still $500. So at the end of the period, the total value of his business now, in terms of net, uh, the total assets, is $2,100. In terms of liabilities, he still owes his mom the debt of five hundred dollars and the amount that's left over in the in the business is now the equity which is sixteen hundred dollars which is basically the fifteen hundred dollars that he started with plus he earned a profit during the month of a hundred dollars and so he his value in the business has increased by a hundred dollars and at the end of the day the total liabilities and equities as we mentioned before must always balance to the total assets. So the total liabilities and equity is $2,100. So basically, the income statement helps to explain the, how the activities of the business affected the balance sheet from the opening balance sheet to the closing balance sheet. But you'll notice one thing. The cash over here started off at $1,500 and we ended up with $1,400 in cash. However, we made a profit of $100. There's another statement known as the cash flow statement which helps us to understand and reconcile how the cash at the start of the period uh, went in and out of the business and ended up at the end of the period. So here's the cash flow statement and as I mentioned it helps us understand and reconcile how we went from a $1,500 cash at the start of the period to $1,400 at the end of the period, notwithstanding that we made a profit of $100 during the period. It basically breaks things down into operating activities, investment activities, and financing activities. And so what we can see here is, in terms of uh, expenses, there was a cash outflow of expenses of $100, um, and we had sales, but these sales were not cash sales. So in terms of operating activities, um, there was a, actually a total outflow of cash during the period of $100. During the period there were no net new investment activities and also there was no financing activities during the period. Um, even though at the start of the period um, there was a debt of $500, at the end of the period we still hadn't paid back um, any debt of $500, so there was no financing activities at the end of the period. Therefore, there was a total net cash outflow of $100 during the period. And so, as you can see, that explains the $1,500 at the start, um, ending up with $1,400 at the end of the period. So these make up the basic financial statements of the business. Basically, the financial statements at the end of the period that Ron would be interested in would be the balance sheet, which would tell him his financial position as at the end of the month, what his assets are and what who he owes money to and what the value of his business is to him at the end of the period. The income statement, which would show him all the activity that happened during the period, and the cash flow statement, which would show him all the cash flows in and out of his business due to operating activities, investment activities, and financing activities. Now, in addition to these financial statements, Ron may also want to prepare what's known as the notes to the financial statements. These are useful, especially if it's presented, these financial statements are presented to external parties such as banks, for a loan or for other reasons. These notes basically provide further explanations of both his accounting uh, policies that he used in terms of how and when he would record certain items, uh, as well as providing more details into things such as, uh, for example, the debt to his mom, how much it was, when is it due, uh, and uh, any interest that's owing on them. And that would be the, the last component of the financial statement. Well, I hope you found this segment useful. In the next section, we will go into more details into how to actually set up your accounting process and create these various accounts and start recording what we call journal entries so that at the end of the month you'll be able to produce your own set of financial statements. Thanks for joining us.